Hello, Dr. Ian here with Dr. Autoimmune. I want to talk to you today about functional ranges versus laboratory reference ranges. So there are two schools of thought out there. Neither are wrong, neither are right. But it's important to acknowledge that there's something called a functional range, more of typically associated with a healthy population, I meaning they've studied these ranges on healthier groups of people, and now you're being compared to them, versus a laboratory reference range, something that's been basically a large amount of people have been taken, they've been pooled into a group, and then it's turned into something called a bell curve. And the bell curve is something where we take the edges off and then within that what we call two standard deviation range or if you fall outside of that two standard deviation range then it's going to be flagged as high or low so let's talk about that bell curve range and what are some of the limitations there and then we're going to talk about the functional lab range and what are some of the advantages of that so when you talk about a quote unquote healthy population for a bell curve, what in reality is what they're actually saying is average. And so we never want to be called average with their health. We want to be called healthy, which also would actually mean optimal if you ask me. That's a different definition per the person. But if you want to talk to Dr. Autoimmune, well that's going to be a actual healthy number, not just a average number. So what happens is you'll, in, in the, the, let's just talk about the, the measurement called TSH. So TSH, that stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, okay? That's the most common marker. It's actually a pituitary marker and it reflects how well the thyroid is making thyroid hormones. Now, what we find in the Denver metro area in LabCorp as far as their range is a 0.42 of 4.6, meaning that that reflects that they've cut off the, the, the extreme highs and the extreme lows, and then the average number that they came out with was 0.4 to 4.6. Now, if you're a 0.45 or if you're a 4.5, you're still healthy, meaning you're falling within the normative range and that's not flagged. And so then what happens is the doctor says, you're normal, congratulations, go home. And so unfortunately, when you're having symptoms, let's say if it's a TSH marker and you're having thyroid symptoms, fatigue or um, malaise or your inability to maintain normal weight or you're losing your hair or your brain fog or your anxiety or you know or you're cold all the time Th that issue could actually you could have all of those symptoms but you're only outside of the actual functional range which is the healthy population range now some markers have this some don't for TSH the American Endocrine Society the people who get together and create lab ranges for endocrinologists have basically studied people early 20s and they found the functional range for TSH is going to be between here and that is a 1 to 2.5. So if again you're assessing your lab values only purely through what most medical doctors or you know other medical traditional western medical practitioners then if you're without um if you're beyond you're, you're under that or if you're above that you really may actually have issues and we want to be concerned about it if i see a 2.9 i know that there's not optimal physiology going on with tsh and quite frankly, many pe people will say, hey, look, the closer I get to a one, the better that I feel. And that can really vary depending on the person because it's always never just about one marker. We never base anything just on one marker. Another really good example of this, okay, is going to be blood sugar. So blood sugar will um, typically, the range you're going to see on that in the Denver area is going to be about a 62 a 99. Now again, if you go to San Diego, you're going to find that the actual range is much wider. Why is that? Well, there's more people with insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes in San Diego than there are in 
Denver. So that starts to change the ranges demographically depending on where you're being compared and who you're being compared to. So 60 to 99, well actually really the functional range there is probably more like 75 to 90. Okay, and so that's again just one marker that looks at blood sugar handling, but it is a tighter range, and it's why we want to look at labs in both a laboratory reference range and a functional reference range because we can look at both of those pieces of information and start to look at pre post comparisons, right? The only reason why we do labs is to repeat labs to verify that we're actually getting you better. Hopefully this was uh, good information for you. Hopefully this sheds a little bit of light on, on the labs, how we actually understand those. And remember, you don't have to be average. Hopefully you're going to be healthy. Take care. Dr. Ian here from Dr. Autoimmune.